There are times when things concerning Cinema 4D aren't so apparent. I find that 80% of my time in Cinema 4D is problem solving, which is probably why I love this kind of work. The subject I'm touching on today is texture mapping. I'm currently working on the project for a local packaging company and at this time I'm coming up with some concepts for the project and this has led me to do some research for what I need. This of course has led me down a rabbit hole and the information I was looking for just couldn't be found. The information I did find is great but it just doesn't suit my needs. I needed to project images onto clones and define the area of projection for each image. So I had to put my thinking cap on and come up with a solution, which I did. It was simple, yet I couldn't find the quick how-to tips. In this tutorial, I would like to expand on the knowledge that's already out there by running through some case scenarios. I'm going to point out the problems I had and how I solved them. I'm going to run through basic texture mapping and camera mapping. I'm also going to show you how to use polygon selection to map textures. And I'll also show you some espresso that may help you in the future if texture mapping onto clones doesn't work for you. This tutorial is relevant to most versions of Cinema 4D. I think the fixed texture option was introduced in R18 and I could be wrong about that. But if the version of Cinema you're using doesn't have the option for fixed texture in the clonal object, I'm afraid you can't follow along. Also you need to have a basic understanding of the clonal object and Cinema 4D materials. I'll just be using Cinema 4D materials in these examples, but the basic principle is the same for Redshift and Octane. So without further ado, let's crack on. Hi, it's Beefy and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, then this is where I post tutorials and breakdowns of my projects. If you're into design, 3D modeling, motion graphics, cinema 4D, X particles and the like, then you're on the right place. So why not start by subscribing today? It would really help the algorithm find this channel and help me make more content. And if you're feeling really adventurous, then tinkle that bell so you don't miss a thing. Before I show you the scenarios, I just want to run through the fixed texture mode in the cloner object. And I'm using Cinema 4D S24. I still haven't moved over to R25 yet. I'm still in the middle of a lot of things, so migrating over isn't feasible at present, but that's besides the point. I have here in my scene a grid array of polygons. My polygons are 100 centimeter by 100 centimeter. And I have them in the grid of four on the X, four on the Y, and one on the Z there. So I have a, a spacing in between each one as well. So I have the mode in per step, and I have the size at 105 centimeters. So I have a five centimeter gap in between each clone. And I have a plane effector already in my cloner here. So we come to the effectors here. So I have my plane effector there. I have the rotation on the H 180 degrees, and I have a linear field. So when I move my linear field, my planes rotate from left to right and vice versa. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to apply two materials. So I have two materials here. So I have two different images piped into the color channel there. So I want to add these to my grid array. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply these to, I'm just going to apply the first one to my grid array. So I'm just going to apply that straight to the cloner. And this doesn't work if you apply it straight onto the polygon because we need to use the cloner to project the whole image. And at the moment, we're on UVW mapping. So the so Cinema 4D doesn't know what to do with that. So it's just placing the image on each face of the polygons there. OK, but we want this image to cover the whole of this grid and we want it on the front side of these polygons. So I need to change the projection from UV mapping to cubic. And this is now tiled the image over our grid array there. So I need to turn off the tile. And what I want to do is I want to come to the material tag and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say fit to object. So I want sub objects to be included. So I'm just going to say yes there. And now we have our image displayed across our grid there. Okay. And it's also displayed in the back, but I just want this to be on the front. So I'm just going to change the side to front 
and now we have our image just on the front there. So I'm just going to do the same with the back image. So I'm just going to apply that to the cloner and I'm going to change the UV mapping to cubic, uncheck tile, and I'm just going to right click on the material tag there and I'm just going to say fit to object. And yes, I want sub objects to be included. So I'm going to say yes. And I need to say, I want this on the back. So by selecting front or back, you're just actually using the normals of the polygon there. So this is the correct normal and this is the reverse normal on the back. Okay. So now when we take our linear field, we're just going to run this through here. And we have our image flipping around, which is pretty cool. But as you can see that the image isn't stuck to the surface of the polygons there. So we need to fix this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the cloner object. And if I come to the object tab, we have this field here, which says fixed texture. And if I just switch this on and I'm going to select straight because there's three different modes here. So I'm going to demonstrate what straight does first. And then I'm going to show you what alternate X and alternate Y does. So I'm just going to select straight. And now if I just take the linear field, this is working like so. But as you can see, the image on the back isn't displaying correctly. But we have our image is stuck to our polygons, which is exactly what we want. But we need to correct what's going on here. OK, and this is where alternate X and alternate Y comes in. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my other example here. So we're going to look at alternate X first and I've already applied the materials. It's, it's exactly the same way as I did on the previous example there. And I'm just going to take the linear field here and I'm just going to move this like so. As you can see, we're back to normal and our texture isn't sticking to the surface there. So what we want to do is this time we want to use the come to the cloner object, we want to use the alternate X. And if we look in the plane effector here, if we come to the parameters, we can see that we're rotating on the H. So we're, we're rotating on the X left and right. And because we're doing that, we need to use alternate X. Alternate Y won't work. As we've already seen is the straight mode doesn't work. So we just need to use alternate X because we're just rotating along the X. Okay, so what I need to do is just come to the object tab of the cloner and I want to change this to alternate X. And now if we look at the back of the polygons here, you can see that our image has been separated up into different fields there. And you may notice that this image is actually upside down. So if I move the linear field here, we have our texture is fixed to the polygons there, but this image is upside down. So the way we're going to fix that is to actually select our material. So this is the back material. I'm just going to come to the texture mode and I'm just going to, you can do this two ways. I'm just going to rotate this around. I'm going to hold down shift for increments. I'm going to do 180 degrees like so, or you can enter minus 180 or 180 in this, in the B rotation there. Okay. So come back into model mode and I'm just going to move my linear field now. And now everything's working the way that we want it to. Okay, so alternate X is specific for the rotation that you're using, not the linear field. So we can actually change this linear field to say plus Y, and we can move this up and down. And this is working like so. Okay, so if you're using the H rotation, then you need to make sure that you're using alternate X. Okay, so now I'm gonna to come to the Next example. 
So this is now the alternate Y. So I'm just gonna run through this quickly. So now we're rotating on the P. So we're rotating along the Y. So it's going from top to bottom or bottom to top, depending where the linear field is. And I just move this down here. If you can see that our image isn't stuck to our polygons and this is rotating like so. So we need to fix these. So what we're gonna do is we're going to come to our cloner object and we're going to come to fix texture and I'm going to go alternate Y and we can see that the arrangement of the image is different now so if I move my linear field down our image will be fixed to our polygons there but the same issue we have is that our image is upside down i don't know why that happens but it's just a simple fix of so entering into texture mode i just need to select my material tag and i'm just going to rotate this around hold down shift for increments and there we go so come back into model mode I just move the linear field now and we have our images fixed to our polygons and that's looking great so the same thing again alternate y is specific for your rotation so our rotation is on the p and because we're rotating on the p we need to have alternate y so we can change the orientation of the linear field it doesn't really matter it's just that things are going to turn around differently but we're still going to have our image display correctly on our polygons so that's the straight alternate x and alternate y modes in the fixed texture and this is specifically for using with polygons so you have like the front and back so we have the normal and reverse normal and you can do this with a cube object as well. So I'm just gonna show you quickly how you do that. Okay. So I have this cube here that I've kind of altered. So this is, I think this is 10 centimeters on the Z there, but I've made this editable. So I've just put a, a material on the edge here, just to clean that up a little bit. And I've got the image on the front and i've also got the same image on the back there so i've actually if i just come into my materials i've actually selected front for my front image and i've also selected back for my back image and our image on the back isn't showing so to get around with using cubes just make sure that your cube is editable and i'm just going to turn off the cloner for the moment and if we come into polygon mode and we select the cube here and I just want to select this back polygon here and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say reverse normals now we have that image showing on the back so the back and front is very specific for your normals so so the front is for normals and then the, your, your reverse image is going to be on the back it's going to be on your reverse side of your normal there so I'm just going to turn my clone back on there and and then I'm going to come to the cloner object and we're rotating on the H so I want to use alternate X so I'm going to come to the fixed texture I'm going to use alternate X and I'm going to take the linear field and we're going to move it around so our image is stuck to our image but again our image on the back is rotated the wrong direction so I'm just going to select that material tag and I'm just going to reverse this using the texture mode just rotate this right round voila and coming back into model mode and now when I move my linear field everything's working like so so this is the fixed texture mode in the cloner. So I just wanted to show you this quickly because there's not a lot of information about that out there. And I just wanted to show you exactly what each mode does and, and what specific rotation you're using 
So if you're using the Effecto, then you'll be using alternate X and alternate Y. But for the rest of this tutorial, I'm just going to be using the straight mode. Okay, so we're going to crack on and we're going to go into our next example. Okay, for this first example, I've got a simple scene set up. I'm just demonstrating with standard materials, but the principle applies for other third party renderers. And I have a primitive cube here, so I'm just going to turn the clone off. I have a primitive cube and I have this in a grid array with a cloner here. Okay, so this is four by four by four and my cube is 200 by 200. So my per step I've made 205, 205, 205. So this is pretty simple here. So I've applied the rigid body tag to my cloner object here. And I've also got a plane here, which is my floor and I've applied a collider tag there. And if I just come to my ground level camera and I just play this, everything falls to the ground and collides with the floor. And there's nothing special. It's this fairly simple dynamic simulation. Okay, so I'm just going to come back to the top here. So what I want to do is I want to texture the faces of the grid with an image. So I've, I have some texture images down here. So I'm just going to take the first one and I'm going to apply that straight onto my cloner. And by default, we're on UVW mapping. So there isn't a UVW tag to the cube here. And I've made sure I've applied my image straight onto my cloner. Okay, this won't work if you apply it to the cube. So I want to have this image showing on all sides of my grid here. So I'm just going to change the projection to cubic. And I'm also going to uncheck tile because it's now tiled across my surface of my cube here. And I'm just going to uncheck that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my material tag and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say fit to object. And do I want sub objects to be included? Yes, I do. So I'm just going to click yes. And now we have our image on each side of the grid there. Okay, so if I come down to my ground level camera here and I press play, my animation is going to work, but this isn't looking right. We need to get this image fixed properly onto our cubes here. Okay, so I'm just going to come back to the top here. So what I need to do is I need to come to the cloner here and I need to fix the texture and I'm going to say I want it on straight. Okay, because I just want the images to be stuck on each face of the cube. And if I come down to ground level now and I press play. So that's great. So now I've got the image on each side of the grid there and that portion is showing on each cube. So if I just come back to the top here and if I just select my Kelowna object and I want to make a plane effector and I'm just going to come to the parameters of the plane. I'm going to switch off position and I'm just going to just play with the rotation here and we can see that the image there on each cube that portion of the image that is projected onto is now stuck to the each side of our cubes there, which is looking pretty cool. Okay. So this is the bottom face showing now, and that's exactly what we want there. So what if I want an image on each side of the grid instead of just one image? How would I go about that? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to switch up my cloner object for the moment. And I can't do that with a primitive. What I needed to do was to actually make my cube editable. So I've got one prepared here already. So I'm just going to drop that into the cloner there. And I'm just going to move my primitive back into the archive nova there. So we're hiding that. And I'm just going to take this image off for the moment. And we're just going to have a look at the cube here. So I made this editable. So each side here, I've made a selection and I've stored the selection here. So I have a selection tag for each side here. So I have front, right, left, back, top and bottom. Okay. So I've named, I've named everything the same as my 
material here so that I know which material is going to be on what side. So I'm just going to switch my cloner on and this was the problem that I had is like how do you get an image on each side of a cloned object? How do you do that? And I couldn't find this information anywhere and so I had to haphazardly um, I had to work this out and so what I came up with was using the cube and just making it editable and making selections for each side there and I was trying to apply this to the cube first and stuff and that and what I wanted wasn't working and then I thought oh, okay so let's just apply the material to the cloner and then just use this selection tag to display that on whatever side so the actual cloner is actually cloning these selection tags along with the cube and this is pretty cool actually so if I just take the front material here and then just apply that straight into my cloner so if you apply it to your cube this isn't going to work so if I apply that straight to my cloner and select my tag there I need to do the same thing as before I need to make the projection cubic and also I need to uncheck tile and if I right click on the material tag here and say fit to object and I want to say yes now we have our image on each side of the grid like before but I wanted to have this on the front here so with my selection tag here so I have the selection here I didn't realize this actually works for clones and drop this selection tag into the selection there now our image is on the front of the clone and that's pretty amazing so I'm just going to apply all of these now and I'm just going to crack on and get this set up here so there we go so now we have our images if I just rotate around here we have an image on each side of our grid array there anyway so that's how you're going to get an image on each side of your grid there and we're just going to come to the cloner and I'm going to say this is fixed texture straight which is already set there and if I just come into my ground level camera and I just let this play and this is working exactly the way that I want it to okay so I have an image on each side of the clone there and each object is displaying that part of the image which is pretty pretty amazing there so that's how I came up with this technique I'm not sure I'm the first to discover or to know about this as I said before there was very little in-depth information on fixed texture in the cloner object so I wanted to share this with you all it's a very handy thing and hopefully this will help you in the future. This technique is very specific for the cloned object. In these examples the cube has been a direct child of the cloner object. But in a scenario where you have an animation on the cube and the hierarchy has been placed into a null before it's cloned, then this technique may not work for you and you will have to use a different technique to map your texture onto your grid array. So I'm going to run through a different method using camera mapping. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do some camera mapping now and I have a similar setup. So I have a cloner object with a dynamics tag on it. So this is a rigid body tag and I also have a floor, which is the plane here and that's got a collider tag and this is exactly the same setup. I'm not going to let that run. We know exactly what happens when it hits the floor. I'm going to come straight into explaining what I have set up here. So I have an, a cube that I made editable and I have seven textures here so I created a I'll just come out here and just come straight in here so I made a cube and I had a fillet on it and I made this editable so now I have everything live here so I'm just going to come in here and I can select my cube and now I can select the sides that I want so I've made some polygon selections with these as I did with the previous example and the difference here is that I've got a fillet now on here. So I'm just going to add that straight onto my cloner object here. And I'm just going to make sure that I have my fillet selected there. So now I want to come out this 
we now have our border around our image which is a nice little addition to our animation here so and now all i want to do is just add images to each side of this cube here and ultimately to each side of the grid so i want an image here on the front image here on the side etc but we're going to do this with camera mapping okay so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to take the first material which is the front side i'm just going to apply it straight to the cloner and if I select the material tag here and just come to the attributes in the tag properties here, I've got my name of my material tag there. And also I'm in UVW mapping as we were before, which is the default. And what I want to do is I want to change this to camera mapping. Okay, so now everything's gone a bit weird. So I'm just going to take my camera here and I'm just going to drop that straight into the camera field there. And now we have our image has been projected onto our grid array there so i'll we'll just come out here and just twirl around a little bit we can see that that is now stuck to our grid array which is pretty cool but it's not what i want to do i want this image to be on the front side of my grid array there so what i need to do is i need to have a camera that's facing the cube here so i set up some cameras already and I'll place these in nulls so that I can position them around the cube. If I just switch these on, you can see here that I have a lot of cameras in my scene here. But these cameras are facing the side of the grid array that we want to apply this material to. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm going to come back into my main camera here. And I'm just going to take the front camera here and I'm just going to drop that into the field instead. So now this is projecting onto the front side of my cube, which is exactly what I want. And my image is one to one ratio. And I made this one to one ratio because my cube and grid array is one to one ratio as well. So I just need to change the film aspect to one to one there. And also I just want this to be displayed on the front side of my grid array there. So I'm just going to take the selection tag for the front and I'm just going to drop that into the, my selection. And now we have that projected onto my grid array. So this is now projecting onto every side of the grid there. So I'm just going to come into the cloner object and I'm just going to decrease the numbers on the Z. And as you can see that as these cubes move backwards, this image gets bigger. And I like that. It's kind of like it's a little bit of variation, but if you want these to be the same size, then we need to come into the camera and we need to change the projection from perspective to parallel. So if I do that now, when I come into my cloner, and reduce the numbers on the Z there, we can see that the image is the same size on every face of the grid there if you want to make some adjustments to your projection there if you come to the camera here um, we have zoom and zoom you think that if you decrease the number here that the image would get smaller but it doesn't so if i do that you can see that the image actually gets bigger so i just need to get to get this to the point where i've got the edge of the photo there so i'll 1.2 is going to be just good for me. If I come back into the cloner here and reduce the numbers on the Z, we can see now this is projecting the way that we want it to. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to apply images to each side of this grid using the cameras that I set up here, okay? Okay, so there we have my images are now projected onto each side and this is using the cameras in the parallel mode. And this is looking pretty smart to me. So the problem now with camera mapping, even though we have this all in the cloner and we have the option to fix the texture, the fixed texture isn't going to work the same way as if we projected this as cubic. And if I just select the straight there and I'm going to come down to the ground level here, and let this play we're going to see exactly what's happening so the image is still projecting onto the grid array there but 
is not fixed to the surface there. And there is a solution to this. Let's just come back to the top view here. What we want to do now is we want to fix the images to this grid array here. So the way to do that is we actually need to make the cloner editable. So I'm just going to make a copy of this and I'm just going to switch this one off and just turn it off for the moment. So we have this cloner object here with our cube and it's the same setup as our previous cloner. And what I want to do is I want to make sure that I do have my fixed texture switched on. Otherwise these materials I'm going to be copied onto my clone. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select the cloner and I'm going to press C. And now we have all our cubes there with the materials applied to it. I'm just going to select these cubes one by one. I'm just going to make sure that I come into my model mode here. Okay. And so I'm going to select cube zero here. And if I move this out, you can see that the image isn't fixed to the cube there and that's not what we want what we want to do is have this portion of the image stuck to this side of the cube there and the way we're going to do that i'm just going to move this down here so we can see what's going on so even though that we have a uvw tag nothing's been mapped to it so what i want to do is i just want to get rid of that completely because we're going to be creating new ones so what we want to do now is we want to select all the materials here. Just come straight down here, select them all. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to generate UVW coordinates. So now we have a UVW tag for each texture there. You can have as many UVW tags on an object. It doesn't really matter for this instance. For this quick and easy way of mapping textures, this is going to be just fine. Okay, so now if I just set my cube here, you can see that this image is now projected onto our cube, which is exactly what we want there. So now that we have our texture mapped onto our cubes and even though that we have our dynamics tag on there it probably work but it's not you're not going to get the same animation as you did before so if you want the same animation as your original cloner i'm just going to remove this tag here and just going to remove these materials we don't need them anymore and what i want to do is i want to create a new null i want to put all these cubes into a new null so i'm just going to show you a quick expresso setup that will have these cubes here driven by the original cloner, okay, which has a dynamic tag on it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all these cubes out here and I need to put them into a new null. Okay, so I'm going to create a null and I'm just going to call this clone driven. Clone driven, okay. So I'm just going to move this down to here. And I'm going to select all these cubes here. And I'm going to put these into the new null there. And I can close that and I can just get rid of the old null. The reason why I'm placing everything into a new null is because if I leave everything in the null that was generated when we made the cloner editable, the expresso we're going to create won't work. Strange things will happen. Okay, so before I start setting up this Expresso, I'm gonna explain something here. So these cubes have now been renamed cube zero, cube one, cube two, cube three. And this is this has taken that information from our original cloner. So I'm just gonna switch this null off for the moment and I'm gonna put our cloner back on. And I'm gonna to come to the cloner and I'm going to come to the cloner. I'm going to come to the transform tab and come to the display. And if I just select index, you can see where these numbers are come from. So along the bottom here, I've got cube zero, cube one, cube two, cube three, and it goes four, five, six, seven. And this will repeat to the top and then start again at the bottom there. So I'll just come out of my camera here so we can line these up and we can see this better. So 
to identify these numbers, you probably have to use the parallax of where the numbers are just to get an idea. So these front cubes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And then it goes back to the bottom. So 16, 17, 18, 19. So cube zero is the bottom left here. And, and cube 63, which is the 64th cube, is positioned at the back on the top right here. Okay, so that's the way the numbers are displayed by default in the cloner there. So these numbers correspond to each cube here. So cube zero is the same cube as the object index of the cube in the cloner there. So we're going to use this information from the cloner to drive this information here in our null here in this hierarchy. So we got all the zero through to 63 there. Now we understand the renaming of these cubes here. So I'm just going to switch this off and actually switch this all off together. And I'm just going to switch my null object here with all my cubes in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click the null object and I'm going to come down to programming tags and apply espresso. So this is a fairly simple espresso. There's nothing to it. Okay, so what the first thing we want to do is this is a hierarchy. So we have this null object and we have a hierarchy of our cubes with the numbers here, which is cor corresponding to the object index in the cloner here. So what we want to do is use a hierarchy node. And what this is going to do is going to look into our hierarchy and it's going to loop. So it's going to read from 0 to 63, 0 to 63, 0 to 63. And we need to help this hierarchy look for the object index of each cube. So I'm going to bring in an object index node. So now this is going to help the hierarchy understand where it is in the loop. So if it's at the top, it knows that it's on object ID zero. If it's halfway down, there's object 32, etc., and stuff like that. So, so this is going to keep looking at the hierarchy here, and this is going to help it identify where it is in that order there in the hierarchy. Okay. And the next thing we need to do is we need to bring in the null object here, and we're just going to pop that there. So what I want to do is left click the blue here and the inputs I want is object and local matrix. Okay, so the local matrix is everything that's corresponding to everything in this area here. This is the local matrix. The global matrix is every, the whole scene. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to connect these up. So I want to take the object to instance and instance to object. Now we want to take the information from the cloner here. So I'm going to drop that in here. And the output I want is I want to left click the red output here and I want to select object. So what we want to do now is we want to tell the Expresso here that what we're looking at in the hierarchy is going to be controlled by the cloner here. So we need to use a data node. And I'm just going to drop that straight in here. So we need to tell the data node where we are in the hierarchy. So we need to connect the index to the index in the data there. And we need to tell the data node what the cloner is actually doing. So the position rotation of each clone there. So I'm just going to pop that straight into the object. And we're controlling the local matrix. So we need to connect these two here. So I'm just going to pop this in here and we should be good to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make sure that my cloner is active, but invisible. So I'm just going to make sure that this is clicked on there. I can close my hierarchy there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into my cube here and I'm just going to make sure that my camera is on. So I want to come down to the bottom, to the ground level, 
and what I want to do is just press play. So all the cubes you're going to see are the ones that are in the hierarchy here. And there we go. This is now being driven by our cloner there. So this is really handy that when you convert your clones to actual objects and stuff and apply the dynamics tag, you're not going to get the same animation as you did before. So if you like the animation, you set up everything that you want in your cloner there, and this is working the way you want it, then this is a good way of actually getting your animation and getting a good representation of what you had before. But your images are now stuck to each cube. These are just some of the scenarios and how to use texture projection. This of course is the tip of the iceberg. It's an easy way to map textures without using UV edit, but on occasions using UV edit is what you need to do, as texture mapping doesn't always work in the way you expect. But knowing the fundamentals of how this works is a step nearer to solving problems in the future. I just wanted to share this with you. As I said, the information out there is good, but it doesn't go in depth. And I hope what I've shown you today will help you in your future projects. So I'm going to leave this here and I shall see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. I really hope what I've shown you today has helped you in any way and you've learned something useful from this. I would love to see what you've made using this technique. So tag me in Instagram at Almost Daily Render. And don't forget to like, subscribe and jingle the bell so you don't miss a thing. And as always, any questions, comments, then please leave them below. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.